Welcome to a late night on Thursday. It is still Thursday in Hawaii, so uh, I'm under the wire. Anyway, uh, I'm doing my best to recreate the conditions under which Mohib and I created this project about a week or so ago. Uh, it is called the Prometheus Lamp, and I've almost finished a write-up that's going to be going live right after this stream. So we received, or I got an email from Lindsay at Tiny Circuits being like, we have some new modules coming out. Would you like to try them? And I was like, yes. And then I realized that these would be perfect for a project uh, using these strange little glass lamps, uh, which I picked up for Mohib and me at the Neon Museum in Las Vegas because we built this Thinker Blinker project a while ago, which is why this is validly a throwback, using these plastic bulbs uh, that are meant to contain boba tea. And we decided to just order the, the glasses without the boba, and they allowed us to do that. And we, they were like, oh, perfect enclosures for electronics. So we built this Thinker Blinker, which is an EEG controlled light bulb. Uh, that's powered by a particle photon and a Muse EEG headset. And that is already written up on Hackster. Over here. And you can find all the info on that. But anyway, so when I saw these light, these glass bulbs in the Neon Museum, I was like, ah, oh, we need to make something out of these. So I got a couple of them. And these seem like the perfect kind of enclosure to demonstrate the size of the tiny circuits devices because these modules will fit through the little opening in the glass bulb. So yeah, I was like, can you send us two sets of them and we'll both make a project with it and they agreed. So we did that and I still haven't actually made my version of it. So tonight is the night we're going to put this together. I'm going to show you how and then uh, we're going to make the tutorial go live which is also going to be on Hackster. It's called the Prometheus Lamp. There isn't a picture yet because I didn't get a good picture of Mohib's one. <laughs> and uh, that will go live, yeah, again, shortly after this stream. You can see the new modules on the Tiny Circuits page already. If you're not familiar with them, let me grab these two things actually really quick. As the name implies, they make extremely tiny circuit boards and things. Uh, and these are two little PCB art modules that they've made for the last couple of Open's Hardware Summits. A little piano and a little violin that you can actually play. Complete with an extra bonus octave. Uh, it even does, I think, a, a tune if you poke it in the right way. Huh, maybe not. <laughs> and then this violin, officially the tiniest violin I've ever come across. So if you ever want to mock someone, you can go and play yourself a little jig or whatever. It actually has, oh yeah, there we go. So you can sing along with your favorite karaoke classics like Take On Me by AHA. It actually has four separate strings, strings and uh, one, two, three, four separate uh, points on the fingerboard, <laughs> uh, as well as the open strings. So yeah, these are all really cool stuff that these people have made and they uh, offer tons of modules for you to build your own tiny stuff. So cool. You can find these particular ones under, I suppose, boards and modules, but it might be under Tiny Lily and e-textiles. Let's find out. Because the processor that I decided to use was a couple of Tiny Lily minis that I've had on hand for a while. These are one of my favorite little boards. Um, they are sewable, washable. They're teeny tiny, like this is a dime. It's incredibly tiny, um, smaller than my thumbnail. Yeah. And can be programmed like an Arduino Pro or Pro Mini, which is fantastic. 
Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Here we go. Yeah, there are Tiny Lily RGB LED and Tiny Little Accelerom Tiny Lily Accelerometer are the two new modules that we are trying out. And so, yeah, the fact that they fit into this tiny little glass bulb is pretty exciting. Here again is that processor module. See how small it is? Ah, so cool. And you can put it through the wash and there's no problem. Obviously you don't want to put your batteries through the wash or maybe other parts of your circuits. Who knows? But uh, this particular part of it is totally fine and we'll be happy. They also sent a couple of like a sticker and a button and stuff, some swag. So here is the actual accelerometer module. The fun thing about this is that it has not just the accelerometer, but spots for other things as well. So on the back, you see this list of things that it could be. Pressure sensor, humidity, light, three axis, and accelerometer. Or nine axis, my bad, nine axis IMU. Um, and then you've got, this is an I squared C module, so you've got four pins on here for power, ground, data, and clock. Cool. And then the RGB LED module, which is NeoPixel compatible, uh, over here, is pretty self-explanatory. You've got power and ground, and then data in and out. So you can string a number of these together, and you just push the, you know, put the wire in. Data goes in this one, goes out the other one probably needs to put some lotion on my hands. <laughs> um, but yeah, you can see on the back of it too. RGB LED, ASL 1003, Rev 1, and really nice clear labeling on there. Oh, interesting. Oh no, okay. That is exactly how it's labeled. Cool. So I'm going to go off of these two pictures that I took of Mohib's module as he was soldering it together. He mostly put together the hardware and I mostly did the software. There were a couple of hiccups in programming. One of the main ones is that we were testing the data that came out of the accelerometer module and uh, I was getting a bunch of nonsense, which is suboptimal, and so I had to look up uh, or just poke around and try different programming options for selecting the board and I'll go through what exactly I chose later on. But I have actually already programmed up this processor module with the code that we came up with. So I'll go right into the physical assembly and we can talk about the, the software and stuff later on. So I have a power switch. And I'm actually not sure if Mohib used a full CR2032 battery because I can't fit this thing into the top of the, uh, the guy here. <laughs> but, see, it almost goes. It looks like it goes, but then it doesn't quite, you know? You can't screw the bulb in like that. Ugh. I even chopped off a part of this and it still doesn't go in. But I have a CR2021 battery holder and battery, so I think it'll run for a little while on this. And then, for later on, I also have Get that in focus, there we go. Uh, for later on, I also have a little lithium polymer battery that should fit inside the bulb, as well as this battery JST connector for it. The battery, or the, the processor itself is programmed using this awesome little micro USB to FTDI converter, which you put on here, and to me it looks like a little Starship Enterprise. You just go whoop. And it like sits up there like that. Well, it's tilted now because we kind of bent it around a bit and I had to hot glue it in place, but <laughs> uh, it works really well and that's fantastic. So let's get soldering. I'm going to plug in my soldering iron over here. Do, 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 do. Oh, we've got, I've got a bunch of cool stuff behind the scenes over here that I'm really excited to share in coming weeks. I've got uh, a couple of micro bits with lithium polymer batteries that are charging right now that will be used for some cool stuff that is upcoming. I've also got been playing around with this tiny Pico board. If you missed last week's Fundum Friday, go check that out. Um, I've put some stuff on it, as you can see, and another battery, and uh, I'll be, there'll be some more cool stuff upcoming with this. This looks like it's puffed up, but it's actually not. I keep 
getting freaked out by that, but yeah, no, it's actually fine. It's just a, a pudgy sort of battery. Ah, cool. Lots of cool stuff coming up. <laughs> cool stuff on tiny circuit boards. And I'm going to preemptively cut a couple of the wires here. Just so that I have them handy. Move the finger blinker out of the way. While well, my soldering iron warms up. I'm actually going to grab two sort of equal length pieces of this. Just cutting up this ribbon cable into fours. So this one is going to be for the LED and this one is going to be for the accelerometer. I need to cut these apart so I can strip them and solder them to different parts of the board. On each end. This is the part where I always wish I had more fingernails, <laughs> but I have to cut them down because they get all grimy with all the stuff that I work on. And that's not a pretty sight for the camera, so... <laughs> also, I'm less likely to break them. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Got my wire strippers over here. Gonna cut this part guy apart a little bit more. Now I've got that song stuck in my head. Oh no. Take on me. Take on me. Take me on. Take on me. Let's have a look and see if anyone is commenting yet. Oh! Mohib is on. Hey Mohib. I'm gonna mess up building your thing now. Yeah! <laughs> I've been telling him and Lindsay that I'm going to build this on there for a couple of days now. So I feel like it's finally time! And that's very exciting. Oh, ugh. these are so hard to pull apart. I need a little extra space. Just stripping the ends here, which is easier to do, not in front of the camera. But you end up with this, of course. And doing that for the other one now. Ooh, Mohib, if you're on, you should tell me what you did for the battery. Did you, A, use the CR2032 battery holder and battery and somehow trim it down? Or did you, B, use the CR2021 battery and holder? Or, C, something else? I really want to know. Because if I could use a 2032, that'd be better. I think it would last longer than the 2021 20, and probably provide more amperage. I don't actually know for certain, but I'm, that's my guess. It's a bigger battery, so I assume it has more oomph in at least one, one uh, characteristic, parameter, whatever. <laughs> Fun fact, I was actually going to try and hotel hack this together uh, while I was in LA over the weekend, but I just had zero minutes. I wrote most of the tutorial, and just at that moment I had to run away and do some cool stuff. But what that means is more cool interviews for you coming up. Let's see what Mohib has to say for himself. Nothing. But we do have someone saying hello from Saigon. Hello! Cool. This is what I love about broadcasting late at night is I get like people from uh, Asia. And then, you know, if I do it early in the morning, I get people from Europe. It's so cool. Let's get this sticker and stuff out of the way. We've already got a tiny circuit sticker on our wall here. So I'll have to put this one somewhere else because we're getting kind of full. But I do love it. 
Okay, let's see. So now I need to tin all this stuff. Boop, boop, boom. Actually, I probably don't need to because they're not stranded wire. I can just sort of poke them through the holes and uh, put them together. Okay, so using this picture of the circuit, we've got, this is the accelerometer on the tiny little controller, which is the main confusing one. Um, so we've got VCC and ground, which are pretty obvious. Oh, this is the wrong one. Whoops. <laughs> the shape of this uh, cable is not probably optimal, but I'm going to roll with it. And I'm going to choose green for data, I guess, and white for clock. Just trying to wrangle all of these into place. Ah, uh, no. Maybe I can't get them all at once. I'll just do the power and ground first. Oh, no. Not the greatest coordination right now. <laughs> hmm. Go on there. Soldering around the camera is always a little bit of an exercise in like, what's the best way to do this? This is not the best way to do it. <laughs> I think I've established that now. Oh! Dropping on it on the floor is also not optimal. Let's get this ground one in place and then we can adjust. Come on. A bit of solder on here. There we go. There we go. Just making sure I haven't bridged this with one of the other components. There we go. Now I can readjust the power one. Go in there. It mostly consists of talking to it. <laughs> there we go. Perfect, okay. Now we have, ooh, very toasty. Data and clock lines. There we go. Now Mohib got these all sort of side by side because he was not so lazy and actually cut everything apart, um, by which I mean the wires them apart from each other and that means that he was able to get the NeoPixel and the accelerometer module to sort of lay back to back which is probably better aesthetically but I'm just gonna try and get this together see what happens 
think it could be interesting to do more of a uh, an up and down version rather than a having a particular side of the light bulb that is shining brightly when it's on. You'll see what I mean in a second. In fact, let's do a quick look at the video itself that I took of him demonstrating it. It's a little bit dark because it's dark in the office during this. <laughs> so we're going into the office bathroom where it is ultra dark because it has no lights and you can see it kind of flickering dimly which is what it's supposed to do when it's sort of sitting upside down like this and then when you pick it up it turns on and this whole time I'm being like, Mohi, point at your face so that we can see like how bright it becomes. There we go. Yeah, anyway. So that's what it does. It goes uh, mostly dim while it's down on the counter or whatever. And then when you pick it up and go, Eureka! Uh, I think the Eureka is necessary. It uh, shines brightly and stuff. It's basically just a little project to demonstrate the accelerometer and NeoPixel used together in a way that fits inside of this glass thing. So yeah, check it out. Oop, totally goes in there. Now let's solder this onto the... Oh, you know what? I wonder if I could... Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> thoughts, thoughts, thoughts. <laughs> okay. Um, going to put ground and power in here. In fact, I'm going to put them in this way. Because I want the power to come in from this side and I want to have it be kind of a stack. So power and ground from over here to the accelerometer. There we go. That's two down, and I decided that green was data, right? Yeah, and white is clock. So for those, um, the pins on the Tiny Lily Mini are a four is data and a five is clock. So let's do that. So A4 is going to be the green one, and A5 is going to be the white one. Uh, this is going to require a little bit of contortion, <laughs> but it'll work out. Yeah, there we go. So that's those two done. And now the entire accelerometer is wired up to the uh, Arduino. And I'm going to check this really fast. I'm going to pull up the Arduino sketch, which is here. The final one is called Tiny Idea. We tried a couple of different options first, but this is the one that we stuck with. And I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but I'm going to pull up the serial monitor and see if I can see the data flowing in. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to shut this off for a second, plug the FTDI to a USB micro converter into here, and then plug the processor into that. Doop, doop, doop. Here, oh, no. There we go. Okay. 
like so. And then I'm going to plug that into the computer. In fact, I'm going to use a different adapter just so that I don't mess with my webcam. Now, if all is well, it should show up as um, a slab USB to UART. Slab standing for Scilabs. Oh no! It's slash dev slash cu dot usb serial dash a 1019f8x. Great! Cool. But that means that it's showing up. I'm going to open up the serial monitor. And yes, I am getting beautiful data. That is fantastic. I'm going to take some screenshots of this just so that uh, I get that. And I'm going to show you now what that looks like. Ah, no. There. Cool. So. Um, as I move this accelerometer around, we have the x, y, and z values for the accelerometer's orientation. It's sensing the direction of gravity, basically. Well, it's sensing acceleration, and whichever axis is pointing sort of straight up and down is going to have like a 1 or negative 1 uh, acceleration, uh, 1 or negative 1 g, due to the force of gravity accelerating it downwards. Um, if it were in free fall, it would have a zero total acceleration. And yeah, so uh, our friend Nick Pissarro, who uh, makes some really pretty badges and stuff, told me at Noisebridge about this thing that you can use to find how much something is moving called the absolute magnitude of the vector, uh, which is when you... Um, square all of the x, y, and z values, then take the sum of those squares and square take the square root of that. So by squaring them, you do away with their polarity, or uh, yeah, whether they're positive or negative, and you end up with just like an absolute magnitude of the entirety. Uh, and I was trying to use that initially where you would like shake it, like a bioluminescent, you know, the the water where it's full of bioluminescent algae or something and then you like agitate it and then it shines. Mm, I wanted to do that initially but it was not to happen. My math didn't work out. So instead what we're doing is um, just taking it so that there we go it should be should be pretty much at zero when it's like that and then when you flip it upside down it should be lots. Oh, you know what? Actually, I think I've messed around with the orientation since mine is different than Mohib's. So let's see. At what point does it become lots? Oh, okay. That is good data. So it wants to be pointing up, which means I need to do this. So that when it's in the bottle, that will be up. Good. Okay, cool. Oh, you know what I could have done? I could have just matched the freaking X to the brightness or something. Anyway, uh, due to the fact that we were um, playing around with different types of activations and stuff, this code is not as simple as it could be. It's still got some, some vestiges of the fact that uh, <laughs> we were we're messing around with the absolute magnitude of vector stuff, but that's good. That's good data. All right, so, or if you want to be pedantic about it, those are good data. <laughs> so now we have this, which has been calibrated via me bending the wires to uh, have the proper orientation. Fantastic. So uh, now we're going to attach this NeoPixel here. They say NeoPixel compatible LED, so I guess I, it's not like technically a NeoPixel, but yeah. Um, and what I was thinking was maybe I can just do one data line up to the main chip and then just like connect it to the power and ground on here. <laughs> I think that's the best way. I'm gonna do it. So I will. Basically, I'll just make the power and ground much shorter. Why am I doing it this way? <laughs> 
because I don't want to have too many wires, I guess. I want to have it be as adjustable as possible, is another way of saying that. So I'm going to cut these off. And I'm going to strip them. Oh, got to separate them first. Strip those. Yeah, I really wanted to do this in the hotel because we have this tradition of hotel hacks. <laughs> Uh, which is exactly what it sounds like. You're in a hotel, you have your little travel soldering iron or whatever, um, and try and make something happen on the spur of the moment. I'm recreating the circumstances as closely as possible by doing this super late at night in the office, which is exactly what happened last time. We finished at 1.30 a.m. with extreme satisfaction. Let us hope for the same result. Mm -mm. Come on. Don't be a jerk. Ah, oh, no, it's sliding down. Got my soldering iron stuck in the brass coil. That's not something I do every day. Oh, stop it. You know you can attach there. There we are. Now let go. Let go. Lead-free solder is such a diva. It really is. Come on. There we go. Much better. Okay. Now this is attached. Um, oh, you know what? <laughs> I put the wrong side on the... Uh, I'll just detach the data line, I guess. I should have put the... Uh, yeah. <laughs> the sides that were all even onto the NeoPixel. I'm blaming the lateness of the hour. Do -do -do. You gotta have, like, excuses handy. This is the thing. Ah! The nice thing about hotel hacks is that you're basically like slap happy and you don't really care. Uh, and then you end up like getting grumpy at each other and it's great. Nobody really takes it seriously because it's like 2 a.m. <laughs> ah! Which is one of the best ways to make things happen open to experiments and you can just kind of motor through this is new cleaning I think it's gotten some corrosion so it's not sticking very well to the tip there we go nice All right, there we are. Now let's hook this up to the accelerometer module and also the, um, oh, this could be way shorter, couldn't it? Well, dangle it down. Talking to myself, yeah. Just gonna try and wrangle these wires in a way that makes sense. It looks nice and is stable. So they're going to be back to back. I want this to be like this. Okay, cool.
Okay, let's attach these guys. This is almost certainly not the best way to do this, <laughs> but whatevs. Uh, on Mohib's version, I added foam tape between the two modules so they wouldn't short out against each other. And in this case, the actual bent wires here are going to provide a little distance between the two. Just need to actually get them to talk to each other. Let's do the ground wire first. Oh, you know what? I can curve them around the edge like this. Haha. -ha. I am going to tin these. Oh boy. That, uh... This insulation is not very good insulation for this. Let's just cut that off right where it is. There's a few things you can do. You can use thinner insulation, which wouldn't have as much of a bending radius. You could also use silicone coated wire, which is a thing that Adafruit sells, and I hear is mighty excellent. So it's heat resistant. It doesn't burn off like this. Hmm. This is not amazing. <laughs> I mean, it's some kinds of amazing. Maybe not the right kinds of amazing. Okay, now, a PWM pin on the Tiny Lily is pin A3. So I'm gonna hook up this data line, which is the data in on the NeoPixel. Yeah, we got that a uh, little bit more insulation coming off. Uh, I'm gonna hook that one up to pin A3 on the Tiny Lily Mini processor. So where is that? Da, da, da. Oh, that might actually be... No, it's just pin three. Ha. Huh. Okay. Oh, it's not long enough. Oh, no. Wait, no. I can make this work. Da, 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 da. Bending, bending, bending. Ha ha. It's always necessary to do sound effects for the best chances of success. And it is not shorting, and it looks nice. Cool! So again, I've already uploaded this code. Um, so let's see what happens when I plug it in. USB to FTDI. I keep forgetting that I need to have this plugged in to look at the data. Hey. Okay, so we've already got some LED action. It should be dim down here. And it should be bright when I flip it over. So let's see what happens. Oh, not much. Oh no. Okay, I might have to fiddle with the orientation a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
X orientation is not what I want it to be. Oh, why is that? Okay, so that wants to be the actual down orientation. So I'll rotate it like that. Okay. <laughs> now. There we go. That looks pretty nice. Wait, but it's upside down. Mmm, curses. Okay, you can't see what I'm seeing here, so this is what it's doing. Right now it's precisely upside down from where I want it to be. It's bright down there, and it's dim up here. Should be the opposite, so I need to flip it around. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I'm going to use oh. I'll try to do this without stressing the wires too much. Okay, let's see. How does that? Ooh, no. <laughs> Dim. Right. Fantastic. Okay, cool. Calibration. <laughs> cool. Dim. And bright. Fantastic. That's exactly what I want. And that is what the serial monitor is showing. So yeah. To get them both in the same picture. Do 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 do. Yay! All right. Um, cool. And it's yellow because the way I have this set up, um, let's take another quick look at the code. Ah, no, not that. <laughs> this is going to be very meta just for a second. Oh my goodness. I think my, uh, studio software is freaking out actually. Sorry. Um, so we'll just hide that for a second. Ugh. It's always a little bit of a challenge. Let's see if I can get this to work now. There we go. All right, so looking at the code, um, we have their accelerometer demo code, which is on GitHub. And then you're using the wire library for doing the I squared C. The BMA250 refers to the accelerometer chip. You have the Adafruit NeoPixel library. We have just power stuff. <laughs> No, 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 no. I have these three um, color. Okay, we're defining where the the new pixel is. We initialize that. We have these three variables for the color. These two are basically just for calculation. And for a while, I was gonna try and make it a warmer color by cutting down the green and having more red in the yellow. But because yellow is a combination of red and green channels. But uh, it was doing some really weird stuff where it would alternate between having the red be brighter and the green be hider, brighter and just like cut out the other colors. Very strange. So I just made them be the same in the end. You do all the initialization stuff and then this is where you do the stuff of you read the accelerometer data then you print all that data to the serial monitor like we were just looking at. Uh, there is actually stuff for the temperature. Um, da -da -da. There's a delay to make sure that you're being slow enough for the accelerometer chip. And then this is me calculating the absolute magnitude of the vector. Um, and then, uh, oh, oh, okay. So I'm still using that to make it flicker actually, uh, <laughs> because it's never quite steady. So I'm using the absolute magnitude of the vector to um, show that it, uh, to, to provide a bit of a flicker while it's at the low point when it's flashing dimly and I've mapped that. Uh, so zero to 180 are, you know, roughly the low side of the um, accelerometer values. And then five to 60 are sort of very dim color uh, brightness values for the LED. 
And so, you know, when it's uh, when the x accelerometer value is under 190, that's the mapping that you're using. Now, if the accelerometer x value is above 190, aka it's sort of pointing upwards, then you just set the light value to be that value directly, so that you know you're mapping directly the x accelerometer value 0 to 255 to the brightness value 0 to 255. Um, and then you're going to print the brightness value and then set the LED to that color using this function, which is from the Adafruit NeoPixel library simple example sketch, which goes through a bunch of different tests and stuff. Now, what I have here is a functioning module, which will fit inside of my little light bulb here, if I squish it together. Oh no! Oh! Hmm, I have a bunch of wires between these two. It's gonna have to squish. Hmm. There we go. Go in. Okay, cool. So that works. And what I need to do now is add power to it. So I'm going to put a switch in the power line, or the ground line actually, so that it, um, can be turned on and off very easily. Oh, the late night hacks are getting to me. No, <laughs> and this thing fits in the cap, right? Yes. Okay. Good. And it will sit there without shorting if I sort of bend things around a little bit. Gonna bend these contacts down. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to put this switch in here. I'm going to solder it to there, I think. What's the best way to do this? Like that. Yeah. Let's do that real quick. And I'm gonna put a couple of wires on there as well. In fact, I can use these ones from before. On the tiny little mini, the other set of ground and power contacts are right next to each other as well. So that'll be pretty easy to hack. Okay, we're ready to solder everything. So here we go. I'm going to tin these guys. Ugh. There we go. Cool. Now these guys. And now the two pins of the switch that I'm going to be using. Now apply the switch to the battery holder and attach the Oh, you know what? Actually, this would be the power line, so I have to do that just so I don't get mixed up. Is that actually sturdy? Not really. I'm going to attach the ground line really quick so that has a nice sturdy connection. Uh, 
and that'll hold the power one in place while I sort of re-solder that. There we go. All right. So now we have that connected. Ouch. Oh, <laughs> still hot. We've got our switch, which will, when it's in this position, connect the power line to the battery power line, and the ground line is connected to the battery's ground. And I'm going to hook these up to the controller, which has power and ground lines over here. Make sure I get the right orientation. Now I don't want these to actually interfere with the programmer. So I'm going to try and do them very shallowly. So in fact, I'm going to cut them down a little bit. And tin the pens first as well. It's running away from me on the desk. <laughs> Here we go. There we go. And the fact that the holes are currently filled in doesn't really bother me. Um, I'm going to be melting them anyway to shove the wires through, so. Let's do this. I'm going to try and get this into the hole there. Close enough. Yeah, that seems sturdy. Yeah, nice. Okay, cool. So now I'm just bending this so that I get a nice little stack. And here we have the battery with the switch. We've got the processor that you can still connect to. <laughs> if we go sort of sideways. Looking good. And we have the calibrated accelerometer and NeoPixel package. <laughs> Let's see what happens. I wonder if the CR2021 can actually power this. That remains to be seen. Ooh, maybe not. Oh wait, it's off. <laughs> Turn the switch on. Oh, it's very dim. Okay, I can only really power the uh, red pixel. Hmm, that is too bad. So it looks like this does not have enough amperage to actually power this. Oh, we're getting a little bit of green on there. So it's going bright at the top and dim at the bottom. That's exactly what we want. Um, it's definitely not, definitely not really able to power this. So what I should do next is replace the power supply, obviously. But uh, for now, I'm just happy that the whole thing kind of fits together. You can get that like this, and then you can like put the little cap on top and screw it in place, and it kind of does the thing. And the fact that it does the thing makes me happy. I'm still gonna have to poise Mohib about what he did for, to fit the power in there. Like, that's my biggest challenge right now, is like, how you get the CR2032 into there? Uh, or, you know, onto the top of the, the, um, the whole assembly in a way that it doesn't just not fit in there. 
<laughs> Martin says, hello from Germany. Hello, hello. <laughs> Aw. I don't know if I'm a genius if I can't fit a uh, CR2032 inside of this thing. But I think that's a different kind of intelligence that I will have to explore when I am more awake. For now, thank you for tuning in. Uh, it does kind of work. Sorta. Uh, and I will publish the tutorial as soon as I wrap up this stream with a picture and everything. <laughs> so fancy. Uh, you can check out the links in the description to find all the instructions for what I was just doing, as well as the previous projects of Thinker Blinker and the link to Tiny Circuits, where you can find the new, uh, well, the original Tiny Lily Mini processor and an entire kit for that. Let's just look at it. <laughs> um, as well as the Tiny Lily RB RGB LED and accelerometer modules, which are new and cool. Can't wait to use these for more things. It's going to be super cool. For now, have a great throwback Thursday. Build weird stuff with light bulbs. It'll be great. And if you see any other like interesting light bulb shaped containers, you should definitely uh, alert myself and or Mohib to them because we will be very interested. And just before I sign off, I want to show you a couple more super teeny tiny little modules from this uh, series. So you've got the tiny little Lily motor board, which is a motor controller. I, I'm assuming that by that they mean H-Bridge. Uh, that look at it, look at it, look at how tiny it is. I don't even want to take it out of the bag. I lose this stuff all the time. I have this tiny little box that I put them in. Um, one of the next things I want to do with it actually is uh, I have these walnut shells that I painted with thermochromic paint so that they're heat sensitive. Um, it doesn't look very cool right now, <laughs> but trust me, in person it's like, whoa! See how it's turning like blue and orange and stuff? It's just like mood ring. Um, this is what it looks like when it's dark or cold and then, you know, it's all these colors and stuff. Um, and I want to use natural things like this to uh, use as enclosures for interesting wearables. I don't know, it should be fun. This is an actual walnut that I actually cracked in half. Because <laughs> why not? And yeah, and the other thing is all these teeny tiny little LEDs that they will also sell. So they have these 1206 size ones. Where are those? Here you go. Which are, you know, easy to solder by hand, etc. And you can sew to them with conductive thread. But they also have these little 0402 ones, which are absolutely minuscule. <laughs> minuscule. And uh, can be sewn into whatever. And then, of course, if you sew those on, as long, uh, well, as long with, <laughs> along with your tiny little mini, mini controller, and disconnect the battery, you can still wash everything. So that's very cool. I'll be in touch with an update. I'll post it on the on the tutorial when I figure out the power situation. For now, have a great rest of your night and good morning if you're in Germany. <laughs> and I will see you tomorrow. Ciao.